Hello everyone and welcome back to a slightly later edition of the FPL show. This week it's all changed at the top. We have a brand new fantasy league leader, somebody who has not previously ever even been in the top five of this league, which is outstanding. Our actual uh, previous leader has actually fallen outside of the top five. So a week of complete change at the top of our league. Um, this may be the lowest points total week ever. Um, a highest scoring manager only managed to get 58 points. We've got some scores of 17s, 15s, 14s, all-time low points tallies for our managers due to some really strange results that happened over the last week. All of that is to come on the FPL show right now. Yeah. 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 Football feast, uh, football feast, this the football feast extra podcast. Hey, football feast, uh, football feast, bro. football feast extra podcast. Playing soccer, grabbing keys, playing soccer, time to meet, playing soccer, time to beat. They finna talk a lot, okay? Playing soccer, get the peace, playing soccer, let's get it, playing soccer, let's go. Football podcast. Okay, we're here with the Football Feast Extra Fantasy League. We will do what we normally do. We will go through the top five teams. We'll look at who performed well and who didn't perform well. And hopefully this gives you some indication of who to put in your teams for the upcoming week. <clears throat> of course, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but international break is directly after this week, which will give you some more time to jig around your teams. So let's get into our new league leader, Bayern Brew, Lyle Clarkson, who's not even been anywhere near the top five this season, has found himself in first place with 698 points. Actually, 12 points clear, sorry, 11 points clear of second place. Now, after everybody just collapsed last week, incredibly. So let's have a look to see how Lyle managed to get to the top. We start in goal, strong start, Alisson Becker, clean sheet for him, six points for Alisson in Liverpool's win. Van de Veen only with one point. Funnily enough, even though he did go off injured, he's probably one of the better choices if you were going to have a Tottenham centre-back in your team. Of course, he's going to need to be rotated out. The news coming through today um, that Vicky Mickey van de Veen is going to be out until the new year. So... He's the one that has to go. Matty Cash with no points. Kieran Trippier, nine points. Um, a fairly good result. Obviously, kept a clean sheet against Arsenal uh, in that 1-0 win for Newcastle. Uh, Anderson with five points. Don't see him very often. I mentioned a few weeks ago how he's a really high-scoring centre-back. Um, you know, I think he's the highest scoring centre back actually in fantasy football this season. So good, good choice. Quite cheap as well. Anderson in defence. We've got Mo Salah as the captain. I completely understand why. Liverpool obviously playing against Luton, but Luton pulled off maybe the shock result of the season. Managed to get a point at home to Liverpool. So four points for Mo Salah. And Buemo with five points, you know, pretty solid. Pretty, you know, nothing, nothing special, but considering the week that a lot of managers have had, five points is a quite a good total. Human Son then with two points, not able to get on the score sheet for Tottenham. Uh, Darwin Nunes with two points, uh, Visa with two points, and Ollie Watkins with two points. So just blanks really across the front three. We'll find out a lot. I mean, the players that did score highly, people like Nicholas Jackson that we'll cover in a bit more detail as we progress on the show. But not many people were going to have him in their teams, especially with obviously Chelsea playing Tottenham. So it's, it's going to be a low scoring week. On the bench, we've got Sam Johnston, nine points for the Crystal Palace goalkeeper. Um, only three points better off than Allison. Probably won't see a better goalkeeping combination than Johnston and Allison for the last week. Um, a combined total of 15 points between them. So, you know, I'm lucky that it was Allison that you went with, but still a strong pick on the bench, Sam Johnston. Madison with one point. Obviously went off injured against Tottenham, Alex against Chelsea. Um, Mark Gahey, five points. You know, another decent return. If he was in for cash, this could have been an even better week. And Matthias Jensen with five points as well. So a strong bench performance um, from Lyle's team, Bayern Brew. But yes, Bayern Brew, the top of the league now, the league leaders. 
of the Fantasy Feast Extra League. Second place, it's a me, Mario. We've been through this team several times. Callum Rob um, remains in second place. He's been very, very consistent. Uh, 34 points, which, considering the week that most managers have had, is not a bad total. Um, it's been, obviously, a poor week for everyone. But let's go and have a look to see who we've got. Ariola in goal, one point. Yeah, most people have Ariola and Turner. Turner did not play for Nottingham Forest at the weekend, so it'd be interesting to see who had him in goal, although it probably has been rotated out automatically now for Ariola. Matty Cash with zero points. Tyrese Mitchell, 15 points for him. One of the highest scoring players of the week. He scored a goal, clean sheet, and three bonus points. So that is a really good piece. That is nearly half this manager's points with one player. Has really, really saved him this week. What a pick that is. Simakas, one point, didn't start for Liverpool, uh, only came on for sort of the last uh, bit of the game. One point. Human Son with two points. Bukayo Saka with two points as well. Uh, didn't have an impact. Obviously, Arsenal didn't score against Newcastle. Uh, Moose Diaby, two points. He Chan, five points. Another uh, a bit of a rogue pick, really, but paid off. So, really, really good. Uh, 20 points there between Mitchell and He Chan. Mo Salah with two points. Harlem was the skipper. Two points for him. Obviously came off injured after the first half. Ollie Watkins, two points as well. On the bench, we've got Matt Turner, who didn't play. We've got Cameron Archer of Sheffield United. Nine points for Archer. Would have been so much better up front than either Watkins or Harland. Unlucky, really, there. Dan Byrne, one point, went off injured um, uh, around half-time in the Newcastle Arsenal game. And Kabore, eight points for Kabore, the Luton Town man. I mean, a lot of people have got him in their teams literally just to sit on the bench, but actually a really good performance for Kabore this week. So that is second place. Let's look at third place and some of these teams are getting quite familiar. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is because there's no fifth place, there's actually two joint fourth places. We're only gonna review five teams, so we will stop at Boys in the Hood. We wanna see what's happened to our league leaders um that fell away, so we will stop at them. Looking then at change name, Blake Cowley, 25 points. So a bit lower, I'd say, than average. So a poor week for him. Ariola with one point. Kieran Trippier, nine points. Decent, decent points. Tally for Trippier. Luca Dean, one point. Udogi, minus four. Minus four points for that red card and conceding um, four goals as well. Just if you had Romero or Udogi, you're going to suffer this week, I'm afraid. Um, Son with two points. Madison with one, obviously also going off injured. Um, Anthony Gordon, seven points, scored the winner for Newcastle. Two points for Mo Salah, two points for Watkins, Alvarez and Parland. So really, the Newcastle lads have saved this manager here. On the bench, we've got Matt Turner, Taylor, Anderson and Sergio Gomez. So only one point on the bench. Um, but third position, holding steady. We go on to fourth position then, Mason Mount Kilimanjaro. Let's take a look to see how they got on. 26 points, the total. Areola with one point. Mark Behe with five points. Really good weekend to have Crystal Palace defenders, as we've seen. Anderson with five, Gehi with five, um, and Tyrese Mitchell with 15. So really, really good weekend for Palace defenders. The goalkeeper obviously also getting nine points. Pau Torres, one point. Maybe not such a good week for him. Simakath with one, we've already discussed. Diaby with two. Mitoma, um, I think he was credited for that goal, was he? Oh, no, he got an assist um, and then a bonus point. So it wasn't credited for the goal. It was a deflected sort of cross from him. Um, but six points, probably the best return we've had from Mitoma in a while. Human Son with two. Salah with two. Saka with two. So the, the meta sort of template players just not firing at the moment. Ollie Watkins and Erling Haaland also with two points each. 26 points in total. So let's take a look at Boys in the Who, Courtney Robinson. I'm half expecting to see an Ndoggy and Romero double up here to see what's happened. 20 points uh, for Courtney Robinson. Let's take a look. Martinez in goal. I mean, Martinez, one point for him. Obviously, Aston Villa falling to Nottingham Forest. Dan Byrne, one point. Simicast, one. And Cash, zero. So the back three, four, if you include Martinez, with a combined three points between them. We then go into midfield. So no Doggy and no Romero. Um, so 
that's not what's happened here. Ward Prowse with two points, Madison with one, He Chan with five, the second manager we've seen with He Chan in their team. I'm not sure where the where that's come from all of a sudden, but it was five points, so it was justified. Human Son with two, Salah with four, the captain, Watkins with two, Harlan with one. So there was no disastrous picks here. There's no minuses. You know, it's it's a pretty average. I mean, 20 points is quite low. I think the difference between this and the rest of the other teams is they all had that one player, whether it be Trippier, whether it be Mitchell, Johnston, Allison. They had a player that's got them sort of six to six to nine points. There's no person, no player in this team that's managed to get over five points, which is probably what's letting down. But however, we go to the bench and that's where all these players are that, that, that give, have given him the points, which have not been able to count. And that turn, obviously, zero points, but Lascelles, nine for him. Cameron Archer, nine for him. 18 points on the bench for this manager, Gusto with zero points. So that's that's where that's what's happened. And sometimes they're, they're the breaks you get. Um, so that is it. That is your top five new league leaders. Um, so congratulations, Lyle Clarkson. You are top of the league so far we're going to quickly review the host teams as we normally do we're going to start off with the highest place in the league and see how we are getting on so sean barron who was on the i think he was in the top three last week he may have been in fourth place he's dropped down to seventh 17 points one of the worst totals of the season there's a few others that are slightly lower this week but Sean Barron with 17 points. Let's take a look at his team then. We've got Areola in goal, Dan Byrne, one point, Simicas, Pau Torres, Van de Ven, and Gusto. Wow. So he's gone with five at the back and still only managed a total of five points. That's including the goalkeeper. That's six players, five points for Barron. We can maybe see why he's only got 17 points this week. Very, very unlucky. Human Son, two, Sabatsalai with three and Salah with four as the skipper up front. We've got Alvarez and Harlan. So a really poor week for Baron. It's been a poor week for most of us, but the five at the back, it's just not been a good week to have any defenders unless they're Newcastle or Crystal Palace. That's basically the moral of the story. On the bench, we've got Turner, Erdegaard, Semeno and hudson Adore. Only one point there. So no real mistakes have been made in terms of that. So now we're done with Baron. Let's go down to the next person on the list. I think we're going to find it will be should be Billy, I think, here above me. Yep, here we are, 19th place. Billy actually had a pretty good week, 31 points. When you compare it to some of the other totals here, this is a decent points total. Flecken in goal with zero points, not a great start. Dallow with six points. That's a lot better, though, for Manchester United. The one they win, it's for the clean sheet. Good points haul that. Anderson, five points. Mentioned Anderson a few times. Um, Crystal Palace defenders did well this week. Luca Dean, one point. Unlucky not to have an assist. He put a few good balls in in that game. Wasn't to be, though. James Madison with one point. Luis Diaz with six came on in the dying minutes against Luton and got that equaliser. Um, I personally took Luis Diaz out. I wasn't sure he was going to feature at all, given what's going on in his personal life. Great decision that to leave him in. Human Son, two points. No Salah with four. Ollie Watkins with two. Alvarez with two. And Rasmus Hoyland, who Billy is persevering with here, two points. You know what? If this was a Champions League fantasy team, Hoyland would have been absolutely at the races. Not scored yet in the Premier League. Uh, seems to be a Champions League Cup type player um, at the moment. St. Clair's on the bench with three points. Anthony Gordon, seven points scored against Arsenal on the bench. Udogi on the bench for Billy. Minus four. What a decision that was. And Estipinion still injured zero points. So some good decisions and some good rotation has given Billy a pretty decent week, all things considered. So I guess that leaves me. The uh, last... um, Actually, no, sorry. We've got Tommy as well. Um, I think though I am above him. So we'll check my team out first and then we'll go on to Tommy. 29 points for me, a bit lower than Billy, but still about average. Areola in goal, one point. Dan Byrne, one point. Kieran Trippier with nine, we've discussed already. Pinnock with one. Madison with one. Phil Foden came off the bench to get a goal. Six points for him, the first time we've seen Phil Foden in any of these teams. Douglas Louise, 
two points for him. Fulham, I'm sorry, uh, Aston Villa, of course, losing to Nottingham Forest. Mo Salah with two points. And then that front three of Haaland, Alvarez and Watkins, two points each. And on the bench, no real points on here. Matt Turner, zero. Garnacho with two. Regulon with zero. And Tarek Lamptey with zero. So not a great week for me, but it could have been worse. And finally, we will take a look at Tom's team. Um, bottom, near the bottom anyway. 35th, he's actually had a pretty good week. 35 points, better than the rest of us anyway. Let's take a look at how Tom did. Nick Pope in goal, good start. Six points for him. Akanji got a goal for Manchester City, somewhat fortuitously after that Doku deflected shot. Um, eight points for him. Matty Cash with no points. And Lewis Dunk with one. In midfield then, we've got Hume in Son with two. James Madison with one, Mo Salah with four, Anthony Gordon with seven, and then up front, Watkins, Darwin, and Alvarez, two points each. Just no one up front, really. Nobody's had Jackson. No one's really had a striker that's got them any points so far. On the bench, we've got Virginia, Erdegaard, Dummett, and Estepignon. No points at all on the bench for Tommy. Okay, let's do what we normally do now. We'll look at the stats. So let's take a look at the total points tallies of players so far since game week one. We'll start off with this and then we will head on to um, the totals for this week. At the top, we've still got Mo Salah. Been there for a little while now, selected by 45% of you. 85 points in total for Mo Salah. Haaland still in second place, 80 points. Um, joint with Human Son. It's just not the same season, but you, it would be a lot to ask to expect Haaland to repeat that same level as he did last season. Ollie Watkins, 74 points. Brian and Buemu has kept up that form, uh, 72 points. Kieran Trippier, 68. Jarrod Bowen, who is sort of going under the radar. No one's really got him in their team, 67. Bukayo Saka, 66. James Madison, 63. Although he is rumoured now to be out until the new year as well. Big blow that for Madison owners. Julian Alvarez, 61 points. Um, DRB, 59. Anderson, that's what I mentioned. The top centre-back in FPL this season. Of course, Kieran Trippier plays on the right. Um, so Anderson, the top rated centre back, fifty nine points, and Douglas Louise on fifty eight. That is where we'll stop. Um, so Douglas Louise only owned by eleven percent of you. DRB fourteen percent. Maybe if you're looking to gain some points, maybe look at those Aston Villa assets because they're not owned by a great deal of people, but they're in the sort of top fifteen twenty players in total for FPL this season. Let's look at the round points then. So this is the top scoring players of the round. Jeremy Doku is in first place. Are you surprised? No. <laughs> 22 points for Jeremy Doku. Nicholas Jackson, uh, 16 points with a hat trick. Not surprising. And Tyrese Mitchell, third, 15 points. Toffolo, owned by 0.1% of you, 15 points for Forrest. Um, I'm not too worried about people having him because, say, 0.1%, very low number. Bernardo Silva is only owned by 1.9% of you, and that's probably due to Pep's rotation. Cracking player he is, 14 points. Um, Aina for Forrest, 14. Cole Palmer for Chelsea, owned by 5.3% of you, 12 points. Mikhailenko did score for Everton, 11 points. Bruno Fernandes, owned by 14%, 11. Kudas, um, only owned by 1%. Of players, he is he's looking a very good player uh, to, for West Ham. So if you're looking for you know 6.5 million, he's not cheap. He's not expensive either. Um, 11 points for him. Collins with 10. Norwood with 10. And the highest rated goalkeeper this week, Johnson with nine points for Palace. Okay, that is everything. That is the player statistics. Where before we go, we are going to have a quick look at the upcoming fixtures. So this is for this weekend. We've got decimated Spurs traveling to Wolves for the Saturday kickoff. That's probably the last thing they wanted after playing on Monday is the Saturday morning slot. That's what they've got. Um, it's going to be an interesting one. Um, if you've got any Spurs assets left, of course, a doggy suspended, Romero suspended, Van der Ven injured, Madison injured. This is going to be, I mean, Richarlison is now injured as well. You know, if you've got any Spurs assets, 
Um, maybe this is a good time to look at Solomon if you want to gain some ground on some people. Arsenal versus Burnley at home, you would expect this to be a comprehensive win for Arsenal. A lot of teams set up with a low block against them, but Burnley don't really play that way. They come and attack and they concede a lot of goals. Like If they try and out-football Arsenal at the Emirates, they will get destroyed. So this may be a good one for Martinelli, who looks definitely like he's purring now. He looks fit. Saka, they may rest him. You know, he's he's come off with a knock a few times. Erdegaard's still a doubt. Um, so if you've got if you're looking for Arsenal assets, maybe look at um Martinelli, even maybe Trossard, um, who I think will start at the weekend. Crystal Palace versus Everton. I actually have got Everton to win this one, but this will be close. It'll be one goal in it probably. It could go either way. Um if you've got your Crystal Palace defenders in there like some people have, like your Johnson or your Mitchell, there's no real need to take them out because, yes, they may concede, but they've got just as much chance of keeping a clean sheet against Everton. So Manchester United versus Luton. Any other time in footballing history you gave me this fixture, I would say stack your team for the Manchester United attackers because Man United are going to run riot. You just don't know with this team. You just don't know. If you've got any Man United attackers, this is not the week to take them out. Um, but, you know, I said to put loads of Liverpool attackers in for last week when um, Luton played Liverpool, and look what happened. So it's just one of those. Man United need a big performance. Whether they're going to be able to produce it against a stubborn Luton side, we don't know, but it's a favourable fixture at home for Manchester United. Bournemouth versus Newcastle. I know Bournemouth are at home, but this is another one. I would expect Newcastle to keep a clean sheet in. So if you've got those Newcastle defenders or the ones that aren't injured, then this may be a game for them. A few games on the Sunday. Aston Villa versus Fulham. Hopefully this will be a better game for you if you've got Villa players. Not many people have Fulham assets. Um, You've got people like your Ollie Watkins, your Douglas Louise, Luca Dean. We've seen a few times. Emmy Martinez. Um, This should be a good game for them. Brighton versus Sheffield United. I know Brighton played, obviously, in midweek and they beat Ajax. A really good win for them away at Ajax. But you would expect Brighton to turn up with a good performance here. I've been looking at Ansu Fati for a while. At one point, I put him in my team. I had to take him out because he just doesn't play enough in the league. He seems to play more in the Europa League. But if you want to get a march on maybe some other people around you in your league, he is a great player. And if he does start, he will get points and he will get goals. And then finally, oh sorry, not finally, we've got Liverpool versus Brentford. Brentford will give Liverpool a game and a half, so I wouldn't be too confident on your Liverpool players. Of course, if you've got players like Salah, Diaz, Nunes, I wouldn't take them out. But I probably wouldn't put in any Liverpool defenders this week. I'd probably, if you were considering maybe Trent, maybe wait a week because Brentford are a tricky team to host. West Ham versus Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest coming off the back of that really big win. I would still back West Ham here though. Bowen is a good shout. He's definitely going under the radar at the moment. Also, Mohamed Kudas uh, looks really, really good. Scored uh, in his last two games. So that could be one as well. And then Chelsea versus Manchester City. The big game of the weekend. The 4.30 Super Sunday. Um, this, I, this is interesting. because Even though Chelsea beat Tottenham convincingly 4-1. Chelsea looked poor. They didn't look good at all. I mean, Jackson may have scored the worst hat trick in Premier League history. Uh, they yeah, and I know that some players, you know, it's they've got to be in the right place to score those tap ins. But Jackson could have had about seven or eight if he had anything about him. He he had so many chances. There were so many opportunities for Chelsea, especially with Tottenham playing that high line, to to punish them, and they they left it right till the end. I just wouldn't I wouldn't get on that Chelsea hype train. I think Manchester City probably win this comfortably. I would definitely keep hold of your City assets. Um, as for captains this week, this is interesting because this could go a lot of different ways. Um, Saka, of course, Arsenal playing Burnley, but is Saka going to start? That's one thing. Um, Haaland, of course, playing against Chelsea. He's just come off of an injury knock. He did play in the Champions League. Is he going to start? Is he going to play 90 minutes? Mo Salah, of course, hosting Brentford. This is a tough one. And your choice of captain this week could probably define where it is you're going to finish and how you're going to perform this week. That's it for today's episode of the Fantasy Football League show. We will see you next week to review this week's action before the international break. Take care.
See you soon.